Did you have a good night? Hey guys, welcome back to Sage and Stone Homestead. Sorry if I seem a little bit <laughs> discombobulated in this video. I'm trying to grapple with the fact that yesterday was 80 degrees and tonight it's gonna snow. <laughs> That's like the fourth or fifth heat for s'mores this season. I've had s'mores for going on two years and I've tried to breed her for three seasons. One of the seasons I tried to breed her for a friend and she can't seem to settle a pregnancy. I've taken her to the vet. I really might have to turn her into sausages coming up soon and that's not nice. That's not really what I bought her for. <laughs> Over on this side of the greenhouse, I have my automatic, it's not really an automatic waterer, but it's a, um, a watering timer for my irrigation system for the greenhouse. And I can set it to water, you know, certain times of the week, certain times of day, certain lengths of time, but it does fill with water and I don't want the water to freeze inside of this and, and mess it up. So this has to come off. And I also need to locate my ladder because we need to take the shade cloth off of the greenhouse. Give me love, give me all your love, oh, cause I want you. No one else makes me feel this way, don't know what you do. Hold my hand, could you hold my hand, look me in the eyes. You and me, yeah, that's all I need, and I'll be all right I'll be right here I swear that I'll stay here with you Hold me closer I wanna stay here with you All that we have is each other now I promise I won't leave your side Be who you are and you'll be if you're giving me your love, giving me your love. So that was all right to get off by myself. It actually went quite smoothly. What I'm not gonna be able to do is properly fold this up with the breeze that we have outside. It's not gonna be smart for me to just bundle this up and shove it anywhere because we do have kind of a mouse and rat situation this time of year and they will tear this thing up trying to make nests in it. So until I can dig out my barrel that I have to put it in and get help folding this up, I'm just gonna shove this in the storm shelter, in our tornado shelter, because I know there's no mice in there. All that we have is each other now. I promise I won't leave your side Be who you are and you'll be enough If you're giving me your love, giving me your love And all that we have is each other now I promise I won't leave your side I hope who I am is enough for you If I'm So it didn't really snow last night, but it did ice. We're only gonna be having a high in the 40s today. There's not gonna be a lot of sunlight in order to collect heat in the greenhouse. I do want to move the tromboncino squash that we harvested last week inside because the low dips down to something like 23. And I'm pretty sure that winter squash can handle like frozen temperatures uh, to a degree, but I don't really wanna risk it. So 
I am willing to risk the rest of the squash that are on here for an experiment that I've decided to run. So this is our first year extending our season inside of our greenhouse. The first year that we had the greenhouse, we had pigs in here working up the ground and getting it ready to plant. And I did plant a fall garden right after the pigs came out, but it was all full of frost tolerant vegetables. So I didn't really have to worry about temperatures uh, that are below freezing because I didn't have anything in there that would have uh, been affected at all. This year is different. I do have a couple plants in here that are are frost tender and I want to be able to test the capacity of the greenhouse to see what it can really do. I do not have a heated greenhouse. It is basically just a sun propelled heat retention in here and with the shade cloth off we should be able to retain a decent amount of heat in here to keep these alive. I just don't know to what extent so this is a test. We could lose them but I'm willing to sacrifice that for science. There is a little bit of a balance and a risk to keeping the greenhouse closed up when I've got things like brassicas in here because without the shade cloth on, the full blazing sun could get it really, really warm in here. And brassicas are cool loving plants when it gets really warm for an extended period of time, they will bolt and go to seed. And that's not what I want. I wanna get full heads of cauliflower. I don't want them to flower. So there's a balance there that I think we won't tip over. So we have this ventilation system in here, which both of these, the fan and the regular still air vents, these are both heat activated. So when the temperature gets a certain level in here, that will automatically open and this will automatically turn on. And we should be able to maintain a decent temperature in here. And once both of the vents have taken the temperature back down to a certain level, both of those will shut and shut off. Last year, I didn't have anything like that set up when I did have our fall and winter brassicas in here. And so I'd have to run out, like physically run out <laughs> periodically and monitor the greenhouse. And it's so great not to have to do that this year. So like I've mentioned in the past, this is actually my fourth time growing anything over the winter. And I have never seen my frost tolerant plants be so intolerant of the cold. The kale here that had died back in a frost that we had a couple weeks ago has died back again in a frost. And at this point, I'm at a loss with these. They, I had previously theorized that maybe they were underwatered so that they couldn't really handle the freeze very well, but that's not the case this time. And I think I've basically given up on kale in the raised bed garden. I may start some kale to put in the greenhouse, but I'm still kind of undecided on that. But this is, this is decently disappointing. I did have a little bit of damage on the lettuces back here. They're minimally affected and I think they're gonna be okay, which is good because I plan to actually eat these at a pretty large event this coming weekend and I didn't wanna have to buy lettuce. So I'm glad that those are still pulling through. They are a little bit damaged here. Even my radish seedlings took a decent hit from the frost, which is crazy. I don't get it. I mean, I planted them probably three weeks ago now. And so they've been through a couple freezes and stuff and really should not have reacted the way that they did in the garden. So I'm hoping that they'll bounce back, but it's gonna delay the harvest for sure. What's kind of funny is it's actually greener out here right now in the middle of November than it was in the middle of July. This has been the wackiest year. <laughs> Thank you. 
So we had a couple series of really cold nights and really like overcast days. And so the tromboncino has officially died back. This was a pretty fun experiment. The tromboncinos definitely went through much colder weather than I thought they were capable of doing. And had the sun been out a few more days, I really feel like they would have been able to go a little bit longer. So coming up here soon, I am gonna be pulling these out and then we'll be down to just two rows of plants in the greenhouse. If you've been following us a little while, you may remember that I did put another two rows of plants over here, but unfortunately the rodent situation in our greenhouse was really bad and they ate down basically, no, not basically, definitely all of the plants that I put in those two rows. I had somebody asking me if I thought that it was cutworm damage and I don't. Um, when I pulled out the summer plants that were in these rows, I saw a very vast expanse of rodent tunnels in the rows. So I knew that the rodents were there I just didn't think that my plants were gonna be in their way or on their menu, and I was very, very wrong. So my question for you all is, now that the rodents have kind of taken out half of the greenhouse, and now that my frost tolerant plants seem to be kind of frost tender, I'm not used to that, that's a new experience for me, what do you really wanna see? on Tuesdays. I have been doing garden content every Tuesday for a really long time, but right now there's not a whole lot of garden that's going to be doing a whole lot of changing in the next few months. Really, it's not that long before I am going to be starting plants for my spring and summer garden all over again. I'll actually start the frost tender things like peppers. There's a mouse. I physically saw a mouse. So I have a verdict on these noise making mouse deterrents. They don't work, don't buy them. I start the frost tender things like peppers and tomatoes in the middle of February. And before that, I'll actually be starting things like more cabbages and more broccoli in preparation for a spring harvest of those. And that planting actually starts in December. So I'm only about a month away from actually starting the next round of plants for next season. And so I don't know, do you think it's worth doing another month of just updates on basically these two rows of plants? or should we do something else? I would love to know what you really want to see. This weekend was actually really busy and I didn't film basically any of it. This time of year on our farm, we mainly grow our protein. So this is when we do our goat harvest of our goat meat. This is when we have a lot of rabbit processing days for our rabbit meat. And it's also hunting season. And my husband Levi did just bag a really big doe this weekend and that was such a blessing. The planting part of the year is a little bit on pause and a little bit on the back burner in favor of the protein part of our harvest. So let me know if things like that are, are something that you're interested in or if you want to see anything else. I'm all ears and I've got an open mind. Having said that, we did also just have a really exciting birth happen on our farm. Our dairy goat Pesky just had some beautiful kids. I can't wait to show you. I think that they're probably the prettiest kids that we've had born here yet. I'm working on editing that video and I hope to have it out by Friday. So I hope you subscribe and stick around. Mm -hmm.